Hey friends, Lee Brown here, and welcome back to My Kitchen, My Rules. You will notice I am closing the laundry room door because I heard some of y'all were perplexed by seeing my laundry last time, and I'm gonna put on my apron and good Mr. Rogers style because I don't have but a few minutes and we have got to make a birthday dessert. And we're gonna make something that y'all probably have heard about and you've seen it. You remember your grandma made it or your mama, or your nana, nana, whatever you call her. People from all over the world have made this. We're gonna make some upside down cake today and we're gonna make it the best way, which is in a cast iron skillet. And so if you don't have a cast iron skillet, there is a link. I got this little affiliate link thing from Amazon, get you the right one. But I gotta tell y'all the coolest story. So this one dude made a comment on my YouTube a while back with my cast iron pan. And he taught me how to find out how old it is. And there's these numbers on the bottom. My pen is from the 30s. Y'all know this was my grandma's. And now I kind of have proof of that, which makes me super excited. So let's make sure we start this up. Let's hop at it, y'all. Get your oven to 350, all right. I know that y'all love 350 like I do because it makes life so easy. Now you need a third of a cup of butter. And I left mine sitting out overnight so it'll be nice and soft. And frankly, because I was going to fix this yesterday and then I ran out of time because that's real estate life and it's volunteer life and it's frankly, you know, life. So a third of a cup of butter. Y'all know how to do this. I don't have to tell you, right? That the measurements are right on here. So that's five and the third tablespoons. One, two, three, four, five and about thereabouts. So we're going to cut it there and we're going to melt this in our cast iron skillet. If you did not know, by the way, friends, I can tell that some of y'all are having some thoughts for me in the comments, you can leave butter sitting out overnight. It is a magical thing that does not go as bad as you think. Some of us have been overly conditioned by, I don't know, the television. I don't know what teaches y'all the wrong things, but butter's all right. So we're gonna melt that over here in our cast iron skillet. You're gonna need two eggs. Room temperature is better for your eggs because it can mess up your cake mix. You're gonna need some pineapple slices because you also need the juice. Do not drain these. And by the way, get the ones in pineapple juice and not in heavy syrup. Y'all know, right? You need some bacon powder. I've got Clabber Girl. You're gonna need some Almond Ox extract. I've got McCormick's. We've got our White Lily all-purpose flour right here. We've got our Dixie Crystal sugar, but we need our extra special Dixie Crystal brown sugar today. Then you need a little bit of salt because of course, and then, oh, you need your maraschino cherries. And where did mine go off to? I think the children may have snuck up in here and grabbed my maraschino cherries. Cause you know, heavens, they will take these things and eat them like candy for some reason. Okay, so we're gonna melt our butter over here. Let me get my wooden spoon so I can stir it correctly. After this melts, it's gonna make your pan perfect. If you're already thinking to yourself, Lee, what are we doing here? So easy, okay? So while that is melting, we're gonna get our mixing bowl. And this is very important. Now, I'm not getting out my sifter. I'm short on time. I'm gonna show y'all a secret for sifting when you're out of time. And it involves a fork. And it involves a whisk, so it won't be as perfect. So if you have your sifter, totally get it out. So we're going to get our measuring spoon here. If I can get it out of the way. Now, let's move our camera right here so y'all can see what's happening because I know y'all like to look. Okay, we need one third of a cup of flour and that's going to be that much and a wee little bit. I am obviously measuring off the cuff today because I don't have my one third cup, so don't judge. It'll still come out great. This is not a super precise baking recipe here as evidence by the fact that this is probably, I don't know, depression era. My grandmother made this as a special thing. So take your whisk and kind of beat your flour up. Make sure you don't have any little novels in it and then get your fork. And you can basically just create the effect of sifting by making sure, how do I do this with the camera? Turn it to the side and mix it till it gets a finer look to it. That's very, very important. And this gives you more of a cake flour texture, friends. That's why we're doing it. All right, so we've got one third cup of flour and we need a teaspoon of baking powder. So let's get the baking powder here. 
and we'll get a third. If you didn't know, a tablespoon is about three teaspoons, so that's about the right amount there. And then we need a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. And I know that y'all love my trick here. I learned this from Justin Wilson, once upon a time. I can measure it right in the palm of my hand. That is a quarter of a teaspoon. And if you watch some of my other recipes, now's the time to mash like, just saying, and subscribe because there are other recipes where I've proven to you that my quarter teaspoon is legit a quarter teaspoon. So now we're gonna sift those in together, make sure they're mixed well while our butter is melting on the stove over there. So we've got this. And you see the texture here is very, very fine. No lumps, not a thing, mixed up perfectly. All right, now we've got our butter melting over here. Let's go back to the stove. That's a lot of butter. Okay, gracious and mercy. That's why this is gonna be so good. All right, we need two thirds of a cup of white sugar. And that's, of course, Dixie Crystals, friends. Y'all know we are not gonna mess around with anything but the original, the best. Started in 1917, the best sugar ever, and legit it is. Like, taste it sometime, put it up against its competitors. There is zero competition. And you can make some comments. I've got coupons to give away, and you can also go to DixieCrystals.com if you would like some free stuff, like amazing recipes. I don't know if they're gonna put this one on there or not. I will just have to find out along with you. So we're gonna put our two eggs in there with our sugar. Now, we're gonna get our electric mixer out here on medium and get these eggs and sugar done until they're light and fluffy. And yes, I just noticed that my Dixie Crystals apron matches my little KitchenAid hand mixer here, which I think cost about $25 at Walmart or wherever it is that I bought it. I don't have the super expensive stuff because that's not who I am. You want to beat this until it's got some bubbles in it, which will tell you've gotten it lightened up pretty good. Let's make sure we show it to our audience here. See, the bubbles are starting to form. Eggs are fun. Sometimes we forget how much fun ingredients can be, and this is like it's on a little science class. Because y'all know the mixing is just aerating it, right? Just like I can put so many words into this for no reason whatsoever. Okay, now we are going to get our, make sure our butter's not burning over here. We got it on a low heat. You don't really want the burnt butter, y'all. That's not your friend. Okay, now we need a third of a cup of pineapple juice. And I'm legit gonna measure this because we're talking liquids now. We're gonna have a giant mess if I don't. Let's get my trusty Pyrex here. We need one third of a cup. As I make a giant mess of it. Okay, right straight out of the can. Some of y'all are probably horrified. Don't worry, you'll be all right. Now, we're going to mix in our try and our pineapple juice, alternating a little bit so that it's got the right consistency. A little bit of flour, a little bit of pineapple juice. Get yourself a spatula and scrape down the sides if you need to. I was hoping to get this thing ready before the oven heated up. We're gonna be real close, friends, real close. I think the oven's gonna beat me today, but that's all right. So what we're looking for here is smoothness. We do not want lumps from our flour. Once we get that taken up a notch, I refuse to say bam like old Emerald because he used to aggravate me with that. So let's put in the rest of our dry ingredient there. Now we're gonna finish up our pineapple juice around the edges. It smells so good. It smells like a cocktail. And I probably should have made a cocktail. Maybe I will afterwards because there is some rum in the cupboard. But it's also just the end of the work day. I got things to do, friends. Things to do. All right. Okay, that is all mixed up. Let's pull this nicely browned butter off the stove, but not burnt. Take it off the heat. Now we have this very important step where we are going to take our pineapple rings and arrange these in our pan, which is off the heat now. So we're just gonna layer them in here. Ooh, listen to that. Mm -hmm. 
that a delightful sound. Make sure you leave them nice and round so that we can put a maraschino cherry right square in the middle of them. You're going to have an extra pineapple here. And friends, I'm going to show you what you do with the leftover pineapple from your can because we don't want to waste. All right. Now let's get our maraschino cherries. Make sure you can see in the pan here. All right, I, you could cut these in half if you would care to. I like to put the whole ones in here because I'm a giant fan of maraschino cherries. And now I'm gonna have, there's my oven is ready. I did not beat the oven. Oh well. Um, I think I got room for a half a ring there. Let's make a half a ring. I tell you what, y'all, you're catching me on a messy day. But you know what? I am a working mom, working realtor. And if you feel me on that, and you feel that your life is also a little messy sometimes, you should totally hit subscribe and mm, give me a like. Okay. All you have to do is now the easy part. You made this beautiful cake mixture. Pour it on top of those beautiful pineapples and cherries, make it evenly spread. I've got a little bit of brown because my butter got kind of brown, but that's all right. I like the taste of brown butter. If you don't, you might want to pull it off the heat sooner than Lee Brown did. Oh well, that's how we roll sometimes in this kitchen. But it is my kitchen, my rules. Right, 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 okay. Now we're gonna pull the magic hat trick of them all and you're gonna put this cast iron pan right directly in the oven. Be careful so you don't mess up your beautiful pattern of pineapples and cherries. Set it right straight in the oven. All right, she's in. Okay, friends, she's in about 30 minutes to 35 minutes. So it's whenever your toothpick inserted comes out clean, just like with every other cake. So check back with me here in a minute and you will love what you see. Okay, our 30 minute timer went off. Let's just see what we have here. Make sure that you are super good with your pot holders, getting cast iron out of the stove because it's heavy. <gasps> it's beautiful. And by the way, to my super astute viewers, toothpick is clean, who wondered what about the brown sugar? I totally forgot about it. My kitchen, my rules, I forget things. What you would actually have done is take a half a cup of the brown sugar and heat it up with that melted butter before you put in your pineapple. But I guess I just cut the sugar for this and the carbs. So I think that makes me a keto hero. Is that how this works nowadays? So anyway, once this thing cools for a few minutes, dump it out on a platter. Well, you know what? I'll just show y'all here in about five minutes. Hang tight. Oh, click like in the meantime. Please come out smoothly. Please come out smoothly. Please come out smoothly. Oh, there we go. Well, it's kind of a hot mess, but sometimes you get a hot mess, it's hot, it's messy, it's still tasty and good. So now you should take a picture of yours and let me know how yours turns out. And I'm fixing to eat the crumbs out of the bottom of the pan. Let me tell y'all a little secret. Sometimes it doesn't come out of the pan perfectly. And so you might not serve it to company, but holy smoke. That is so good. Wait till you try this. I don't even think it needed the brown sugar. So I think next time, I might just leave it out on purpose. Enjoy. I'll see you next time.